let's watch a couple of video clips and then uh, and then we'll wrap this video up. Indeed, but you would therefore accept that it turned out your trust in the system of government, your trust in, as you've described it, in, in the understanding mm. that structurally the United Kingdom was well placed to meet the challenges mm. of this new virus, were misplaced. It turned out we were not. We were not as well prepared as we uh, should have been, ideally. I think that is true. Um, uh, again, uh, it's in the nature of the fact that um, the virus was novel. Um, and, and indeed, I think, though so this probably goes beyond the remit of the inquiry, um, there is a significant body of, uh, uh, of judgment uh, that believes that the, the virus itself was man-made. Um, and that, that presents well, a we're, set of challenges as well. Forms no part of the terms of reference Indeed. of this inquiry, Mr Gove, to address that somewhat divisive issue. So we're not going to go there. This is Mr Gove, senior British politician. A significant body of judgment that believes the virus itself, the sars coronavirus 2 was man-made. And that presents a set of challenges. Well, yeah, I think it does set, uh, uh, bring a set of challenges. Because if it's happened once, it could happen again. And we need to learn from the mistakes of history. Now, if I'd been the uh, King's Councillor there, I think I might have taken slightly more interest than saying, we're not going to go there. Absolutely closed it down. We're not going to go there. I would have thought, I mean, if it had been me, I mean, I'm not a King's Councillor, but I would have said, Really? That's interesting. You've got some evidence for that. What is that evidence? Let's examine that. Let's work out how this catastrophe happened. Let's work out how this catastrophic result to this catastrophe happened. And let's make sure a bigger catastrophe doesn't happen in the future. But no, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Maybe the terms of this inquiry would have been better if they'd been set differently. Because I would have thought that's exactly where we should be going. But the inquiry is not going to go there. Forget that one. Let's watch another clip now on disease X. They, each of them, believe health systems should prioritize for an effective response to a potential crisis. And, of course, it's our honor always to have Dr. Tedros uh, with us, the Director General of the World Health Organization. And, Dr. Tedros, may I ask you to answer that very simple question to start with? Thank you. Can, can you rephrase maybe the question? Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> the, at, at the highest level, um, what do you think health systems should prioritize for an effective response to a potential crisis? Yeah. I think that's a, a big question. But I would like to start with, um, especially the disease X, it's um, attracting a lot of attention. And I hope you have seen in the social media. Um, but it's not a new idea. Um, the first time we used the terminology was in 2018. Um, the discussions were in 2017. I was just new director general. Uh, as you know, we annually list the emerging diseases. Uh, and uh, MERS could be one, Zika, <coughs> Ebola, those we know. But then we said, there are things that are unknown that may happen. And anything happening is a matter of when, not if. So we need to have a placeholder for that. For the disease we don't know, that may come. And that was when we gave the name disease X. Um, so disease X is a placeholder for uh, unknown um, disease. Um, I just wanted to start by clarifying that because there is already a lot, a lot of attention. If I may, although COVID came immediately, uh, we were preparing for COVID-like uh, disease. You, you may even call COVID as the first disease X. And it may happen again. Mm. Of course, there are some people who say, oh, this may create panic. No, 
it's better actually to anticipate something that may happen because it has <laughs> happened in our history many times and prepare for it. Interesting. The World Health Organization have been using the term disease X since 2018 for new diseases for unknowns. And uh, the director general is saying it's a matter of when, not if. He didn't say when, but it's a matter of when, not if. And he said they had been preparing for disease X. And if you like, COVID was the first disease X, but they've been preparing for that. I'm not sure you could really tell they'd been preparing for that, but uh, that's what he's saying. So we have these new diseases, they are unknowns, but they need to be prepared for them. The better prepared they are, the better they're able to combat them. Possibly the more power the World Health Organization has, it might claim it's better prepared if it has more executive powers over uh, different peoples in the world that may be part of his thinking there we, we don't know um, but it's a matter of when not if and when this disease comes it's either going to be a natural spillover event from nature it's going to be an accidental leak from a laboratory it could be from abuse of animals in our monoculture system or from um, wet markets and things in China um, all of these things should be addressed but of course What's a bit harder to address is a deliberate leak in terms of biological warfare for nefarious purposes. That could result in a lot of people suffering and, uh, and dying. That is a possibility. But I think we would reduce the likelihood of any of these outcomes by dramatically treating animals way better than we are doing and by stopping this dangerous research into proteinaceous infectious particles, viruses, bacteria, um, parasites, and, and indeed fungal disease. Research needs to be done, but purely for the benefit of medical science and medical understanding, not for the preparation of commercial vested interests or biological uh, warfare agents. A few things to think about. We'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.